Hello, I am Alexander from Bot City, and in this video, I will show you how you can set up your Python development environment where you can create powerful automations aided by Bot City's utilities, such as the Bot Studio. In this tutorial, we will use Bot Studio in Python, so make sure you have the latest version of each installed in your computer. But if you don't, don't worry, I will leave a link in the description below. This tutorial has seven steps. In step 1, we will verify if the prerequisites have been met. In step 2, we will use Cook Cutter to start a new project using a convenience template supplied by Bot City. In step 3, we will discuss the project structure and explain what it file does. In step 4, we will run the bot contained in the project template to make sure everything is working. In step 5, we will set up the bot studio. In step 6, we will show you how you can use the bot studio to create your first automation. In step 7, we will run the project we created to make sure everything is working as expected. Step 1. Make sure you have Python already installed on your machine. To do that, you can open the command prompt and type Python minus minus version. Also, you should type Python minus aim pipe minus minus version to make sure that pipe is installed as well. As you can see, both are installed on my machine. Also, make sure you already have the bot studio on your PC. You can download it and also find a way to install Python from the link in the description below. And that's what it takes to proceed with this tutorial. Step 2. Now that we know for sure that our Python is properly installed, the next step is to install the cookie cutter. We can do that using the following command python minus m pipe install minus minus upgrade cookie cutter. Okay, it has worked. Now that we have cookie cutter installed properly, we're going to start a new project. But we won't start it from zero. We are actually going to use a template supplied by Bot City that will give us all the dependencies we need. It will give us some example code and it will have the overall structure that a RPA project has to have in order to create good automations. So it's a really good template and it's really easy to grab it. You just need to type this comment in your command line. Python minus M cookie cutter followed by the link of the template, which I'm going to leave in the description below. It's prompting me that I have already downloaded, but I'm just going to tell it to replace it. And then it will ask me whether I want a desktop or a web application. The choice between those two is rather simple in some cases. Uh, if you have any application that will run on anything that is not a browser, you need to use the desktop version. But if you have something that it will only run inside Google Chrome or Firefox, then you can use the web project type. It can be faster, it can be easier to manipulate, you can use simultaneously many bots running at the same time, one will not interfere with the other, so it's a fantastic project type, but it only works for web applications desktop application. It's the most common one even though for the example we're gonna see in this video we could use either. It would work either way. Now we need to select a bot ID and I will use first bot for this example. It's just a name but it does need to match whatever name you put on your bot maestro label later on if you decide to use the integration between your bot and the maestro. Now the project name, uh, this is going to be the name of the root folder and I'm just going to use first bot as well. Now we need a short description, it's just description, you can type whatever you want to be honest, but I will go with this is our first bot but in Python. Step 3. Well, I started by moving the first bot folder to the desktop area, just make it easier to access, make it easier to visualize it. But anyway, once we open this folder, we 
are greeted with quite a number of files, but I'm going to explain what each one of them means. The first thing we see in this folder is the first bot subfolder. This is quite an important folder. It takes its name from the bot ID that you have set when you downloaded the template, and it's also the name of the main Python module, which you're going to use when you run this program later. Inside this folder, we have the source code files, and we also have the resource folders, where all the screen captures you're going to use in your bot will be located at. The first bot.ag-info is actually the folder containing the outcome of the building process for a Python project, which means it will actually be created in the next step, but I decided to bring it here to talk about it right now. To build a project, you can use the command line, but you could also use one of those two files right here. The manifest.in is a file that defines additional content for the package, such as emails. The readme.md is just a readme for your project. You can use it on GitHub, for example. You can use it as you would like it. The requirements.txt file is the file that lets the, your project know which modules it will have to download and install for your bot to work. In this case, it's going to download the framework core and the master SDK. You can add more modules. You could add modules such as Google Drive API and things like that. The setup.py is just a setup file for your package. Finally, the version file is just a file stating what is the current bot version. So if we open it with a text editor, you will see that it's just text file stating 1.0, which is the current bot version. Now that our project has already been set, it's a good moment to run it. But before we do that, we need to build it first. We need to download all those dependencies and libraries. Thankfully, we don't need to do that manually. We can instead come to the common prompt and go to this folder within the common prompt. So that would be the desktop CD first bot. And once we're here, we will run the following command Python minus M install minus E and then a dot right there at the, at the end. If we didn't want to use the dot, we could have supplied the path to this folder instead. I forgot to use the, the pip right here. Okay. It has worked. And now that it has already been installed, we can do something uh, a lot more simple than what we can do on other languages. We can just come here and say Python minus M first bot. And the expected results is for it to open our browser. Step five, open the bot studio, log in into your account, and then hit file new project. Select a name for your project. In this case, we're just going to use first bot. Also, you have to select your project root folder. So in this case, it's this folder right here, which is on my desktop. Then select the source code, uh, the source code folder, which is usually this folder right here inside your root folder. In this case, both folders have the same name, but they are different folders. Now you have to select the resource folders, which is usually inside the source code folder. In this case, it's first bot, first bot, resources. Then you can hit create and that's it. Step six. In order to make a quick demonstration of how Bot Studio works, we're going to make some modifications to the bot.pi file. Um, in this case, we're just going to perform some code cleanup first. It's a simple modification to the source code. So we can do it inside Bot Studio without needing to open any sort of IDE. We can just do it inside Bot Studio itself. So right now it's opening the botseats.dev website, but instead I wanted to open the Google website. That's it. And now we're going to position the cursor at the line we want to insert new code at. Step six, part two. Now I'm going to show you how to automate a click operation on Bot Studio. To do that, we have to open our application, and in this case, it's the google.com website, and we have to click the print screen button. 
When we come back to the Bot Studio, this is what we have. We have a print of our application inside Bot Studio. And now we're going to perform four clicks. The first one is just to zoom around the I'm feeling lucky button. But the following three clicks are to define a rectangle around the area we want to capture. So we're going to do it like this. The first click is actually going to be discarded. The second and the third clicks are what matter the most, like this. Now we're going to give a name to this capture, feeling lucky, and we're going to define what kind of action we're going to take. We're going to click. Now the mode is how we're going to check for this image. We could use the text mode and it's basically going to see the image in black and white and it can be better in some situations, but in this case we're just going to use image, which is the, the standard way of doing it. All right. Once we hit confirm, Bot Studio will insert new lines into our code, just like this. Now it's going to search for the I'm feeling lucky button and then it's going to click it. There's one more thing to do in our code. We have to add the paste command outside the if. And in the paste command, we're going to input the, the search string we're going to use in Google. In this case, it's going to be Bot City YouTube channel. Now we can also perform some cloud cleanup to make it a little bit better, and we're going to do it like this. Wait till the page has been loaded. Submit search. Good. There is one advantage of doing it this way. Notice that uh, we're searching for the I'm feeling lucky elements first, then we are paste in or search content and then we're clicking. We could also paste before we search for the I'm feeling lucky button, right? We don't need the I'm feeling lucky button before we paste it. However, if we search for it first, we have the advantage of being sure that the page has already been loaded. So this way, the bot will automatically wait for the page to be loaded before it pastes and submit the search. Oh, let's not forget that it's actually self.paste rather than just paste as you would do in Java. Step 7. Now, let's run this robot by repeating step 4 to see the results of our modifications. So we're going to open the comment prompt and move to our first bot folder, which is inside the desktop. Me, first bot, there we go. Now we're going to run the following commands. Python minus M, pipe, install, minus E and then a dot. Those are the same commands we have used in step 4. Okay, successfully installed first bot. Now we're gonna do Python minus M first bot and we're gonna see it running. There we go. It's working as expected. 